to be cast off into the fire because he did not get his body under control because this flesh has to be crucified. And the only way you can crucify the flesh is by applying the truth of the word of God because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. It says, verse 4, Who has said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? That sounds like pride. That sounds like arrogance. That sounds like people who... When you try to tell them the truth about the gospel, they'll say, who are you? You're not God. Who are you to tell me right from wrong? Who are you to tell me there's a hell? You don't have a heaven and hell to put me in, and I don't. But God does, and God has given us his word, and those who don't live according to his word, God's going to put them right in hell. You understand? But those who live according to the truth, God is going to bring them into an eternal heavenly kingdom with him. He's going to rapture the church. He's going to bring the saints that are martyred in the tribulation. He's going to gather all that are his because the Bible says his sheep know his voice. The Bible says the Lord knoweth them that are his. You understand? And let every one that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. That means get rid of the sin in your life. You want to be a Christian? You got to deal with sin in your life. If you don't deal with sin in your life, you will be cast off. That is called backsliding. That is called going into apostasy. That is called falling from grace, which is something that many people are not even teaching. They don't even believe you can fall for grace. They believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. They believe that once you're saved, you can never lose your salvation. The devil is a liar. Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. God had to use animal skins to cover them. But repentance had to take place. And a sacrifice was made. You understand? Saul fell from grace. He was the anointed of God. He was the anointed king. But he lost his soul and went down there fooling with the witch of Endor and lost his soul. Trying to call up Samuel from the dead. And God allowed Samuel to come up and preach a, a sermon. Two part sermon dealing with that. Just to tell him that he was condemned. So God allowed a miracle to come for that astonished the witch and everybody else. Why? Because there were devils that were coming up impersonating people. But in this particular instance, God allowed the real Samuel to come up to rebuke <laughs> Saul for his evil. You understand? Let's go on. These proud people want to say who's Lord over them. Just like Pharaoh, when Moses told Pharaoh to let the Lord's people go, Pharaoh said, who is God? That's why God hardened his heart. God didn't harden his heart because God just simply wanted him to go to hell. God hardened his heart because his heart was already turned against God. And God just turned him over to a reprobate mind. And his heart got harder and harder and harder. And guess what? He lost his soul. You don't play with God. Verse 5. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. He said, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Do you understand what they're doing? They are oppressing the needy. They are oppressing the poor and the needy. Why? With false doctrine, like telling people they need to give 10% to the Lord in the New Testament or they're cursed with a curse. That's called oppressing the poor. They can't even pay their own bills. They can't take care of their financial responsibilities. Yep. And yet the church wants to take what little they got. And they want to tell me that that's the gospel. That is not the gospel. The gospel is that you take care of the poor. The gospel is that you take care of the needy and the widows and the orphans. Not take what little they got. Amen? When you take what somebody has that they need for their daily living, you are a thief. 
And there are so many ways to steal. You got freeloaders that won't do what they're supposed to do, but they think that they're supposed to beg and the compassion of other people will constantly take care of them when they are not doing what they're supposed to do to get what they need to take care of themselves. Amen? That's another way of stealing. God didn't call you to be a bum. God called you to be holy. God didn't call you to call you to be a crook. God called you to be holy. God didn't call people to preach false doctrine. He called people to rightly divide the word of truth. To study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto the seminary people. Because they can all accept you and God reject you. You understand? And if God rejects you, guess what? He is the majority. <laughs> when God says goes, it doesn't matter what other people say. At the same time, other people can reject you and say, God ain't called you. You know better teaching your family and your home. You need to get to a church building. No, I need to be in a place where I can preach the gospel and take care of my family and not have them being manipulated or spiritually abused. And I can tell you something. A majority, I didn't say 100%, but I'm going to tell you a majority of these churches are abusing people and manipulating people and deceiving people. And the Bible says that wicked men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is in First, Second Timothy chapter number 3. It tells you that. But let's finish here. God's going to deal with those people who oppress the poor and the needy. Verse 6 says, The word of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Seven is one of those numbers that God uses and bring forth perfect revelation. See, when it comes to the perfection of God, God has used that number seven a lot. And then when it comes to his perfect judgment, God will have seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials of his wrath poured out upon the wicked in the great tribulation. So you understand God has purified his word. Let's go to verse 7, and then we'll, we'll talk about both these verses. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So that means no matter how many crooked people corrupt the word, God's word will always be preserved. And we found out there's a Bible called the Pure Cambridge Edition of the King James Scriptures that comes right out of the King James Scriptures, the Scriptures that were approved, the received text that was the word of God, it had nothing to do with King James. King James was just a king that God used because the Bible says where the word of a king is there is power the Bible says that the, a divine sentence is in the lips of the king so God was just bearing witness to the truth of his word that he already revealed and he used the king to authorize a text that would be the text that the church would stand on for the next 400 years yes there was received text before then that's was the text that they used to put together the King James Bible. The scriptures that were already here that were right and they shunned that which was wrong. Now just because there are some things that were translated according to a newer time such as when you're dealing with the candlesticks they were lampstands, and the King James translators translated candlesticks, but you understand what candles are being used for. It doesn't change the meaning of that, of that verse because it's candlesticks there and not lampstands. Lampstands were what people used. They, they, they put oil in their lamps. That's why Jesus told the story of the, vir the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. The five wise ones had oil in their lamps. A lot of people trim their lamps with oil. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have light bulbs. You understand what I'm saying? So they had to use oil. Today, we not only have lights and light bulbs, but we also have candles that people can light. And usually when your lights go out, you usually come with a candle and not a lamp. You understand? With oil in it. A majority of the people that I know use candles. 
and they can still light the house. Amen. You can still see your way. Amen. So it doesn't change it. So despite man and what man does, God's word is still preserved. You understand that the doctrine of salvation through the shed blood of Jesus Christ is shown to you in the King James scriptures. Amen. Other Bibles take verses and totally twist them. We read one last week, and that should be enough to let you make you want to throw away or burn the old Bibles. Any Bible calling Lucifer the morning star needs to be burnt because that's where it's going, and that's what those who believe that are going into the fire to get burned. Do you understand? doesn't matter if you're the, you're the first bishop of the church of the super prophets. You mess with God's word, you're going to be judged by it. You don't pervert God's word. God has preserved his word forever. Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. Psalm 119, verse 89. In heaven, not on earth. Because on earth, you got people corrupting the word. You got people changing the word. You got people doing all kinds of things to the word. But guess what? The word of God is forever settled in heaven. No corruption in heaven. Lucifer and his demons, his devils got kicked out. The fallen angels. So there's no perversion of the word in heaven. But you got plenty of perversion of the word on earth with people trying to change it to suit their own liking. That's why you can't listen to songs that say your word is forever settled on the earth. Well, McDowell has a lot of wonderful music. But that song, Sovereign God, has a lyric in it that's absolutely wrong and twisted with a false Bible. He said, your word, O Lord, is forever settled on the earth. No, thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. It's not about selling records. It's about conveying the truth and conveying it the way the scriptures say. Even if he said, your word, O Lord, is, is forever settled in heaven, he hasn't changed the meaning in that particular thing. But when you say that the word is settled on earth, you have changed something that you should not be changing. So for all the good worship songs that you have, you got to get rid of the stuff that's not truly of God. And there are many artists that have songs that you can listen to and be encouraged about. And then they have songs that you need to absolutely get rid of. You understand? Don't twist the word. No matter how nice a melody you have or people singing, do not twist the word. If you don't repent, there's judgment. Doesn't matter if you have talent or you have giftings. Or whatever God does through you, you have to stay faithful unto the end if you want to make it to heaven. That's why I say I know when I sing, when I sing the songs of the Lord, I don't sound like them and I'm not selling records. But let me tell you something. With my heart right with God, it is a sweet smelling fragrance in the nose of God. And that's who we're trying to please. We're not trying to please people. We're trying to please our Heavenly Father. And we must know Him. Just singing about Him doesn't get you into the presence of heaven. Growing up in the church all your life doesn't get you into heaven. Making a true confession before God and repenting of your sins. Because no matter how nice and how good you think you were living... You have sinned like everyone else. The Bible says all for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means either you've sinned and even if you haven't, you still fall short of the glory of God. But every human being has been charged with the guilt of sin so that Jesus' blood could have mercy on those who repent of their sins. Amen. And we can have artists out here who aren't caught up with record sales. But I know this is what the industry does to people. It destroys them. Why? Because there's a lot of vanity going on in the music industry. 
They don't care whether or not you go to heaven or hell. They only care if you can produce a sale that will make them millions of dollars. You understand what I'm saying? That is not the sound of heaven. That is the sound of hell. You understand what I'm saying? The sound of heaven is a sound that glorifies God. A sound that brings forth the presence of God, the true presence of God into the hearts of the believers. When we sing, welcome Holy Spirit, be here with your presence, fill us with your power, live inside of me. That's the only way the presence of God is going to be manifest in your life, is if you allow the Holy Ghost to come on on the inside, and he comes by invitation through repentance. You understand? God said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is a gift you don't earn the Holy Ghost you understand the gift comes to those who confess their sins and repent when you confess your sins and you proclaim that you believe in Jesus if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead ye shall be Save. God will come in and save you right there. Now, infilling and different powers and giftings, those things come as you grow in your relationship with Christ. And God gives them by his mercy. When you're faithful in obedience, God pours out more and more of his spirit. And you may end up with some powerful gifts of the spirit. But it is your fruit that bear witness to your salvation, not your gifts. Gifts were a sign, but it was a fruit. Jesus said, by your fruits, ye shall know them. And that's the fruit of your character and your conversation and your conduct. But check out verse 8 before we go. I thank you, Lord, that I don't have to rush this. It says, the wicked walk on every side where the vilest men are exalted. Do you know that when you go down there and vote, for a wicked Republican or a wicked Democratic president. Don't you know that when the vilest men are, are exalted, you see the wicked walking on every side. When you see one that's worshiping a false god and the other that's worshiping a false god, you will see wickedness on every side. So it doesn't matter if you're a Mormon or if you're a Muslim pretending to be a Christian, you are not serving the true and living God of the Bible, not when you have policies that support abortion, not when you have policies that rip off the middle class, not yeah. when you are doing what you want to do, exalting your executive powers wherever you see fit, and none of it's glorifying God, not when you have a nation that continues to try to villainize Israel for defending itself. Israel is defending itself from people who have been using human shields for years and years and years and from people who want to wipe Israel off the map, who have had people in the world calling for the destruction of Israel, calling for people to go to war against Israel, calling for Sharia law. And you want to tell me that these people are worshiping God? That is not the doctrine of God. That is the doctrine of the devil. But let me tell you something. God is going to defend Israel. God is going to destroy those armies that are going to come against Israel. Because if this hate speech, if the slanting of the news continues, God's going to rapture his church out of here. God's going to get the saints, those people who are going to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the nation of Israel. And he's going to take them to a place where he's going to protect them for three and a half years. They will be in a place where God will supernaturally protect them, feed them, and give them water to drink. You understand? God's going to protect his people, whether it's in the church age or in the age of the... Or, or during the time of the tribulation period, God's going to protect his people. You understand? Don't mess with God. God makes covenants that he does not break. People break their covenant with God. 
when they turn back to that when God has rescued them from. And by breaking that covenant, you will end up cut off and cast off. Just like an unfaithful husband or wife will end up eventually divorced. Why? Because they've broken their covenant. And God gives you the biblical biblical permission to put away a playboy husband or an adulterous wife.